In this video, we will be reviewing the steps involved for the collision repair facility performing a diagnostic scan on a collision damaged vehicle. The example vehicle in this video is a 2019 Ram 1500 truck, which features advanced driver assistance systems, also referred to as ADOS. These safety modules include a camera system and a rear view monitor that require OEM diagnostic scans. This truck also has an optional 48 volt electric system that may have different steps than the standard truck. Each of the database providers recognize labor associated with pre and post scanning, resetting and clearing stored fault codes, testing, reprogramming, and initialization of modules and diagnostic repairs as not included operations. When writing the estimate, pre-scanning should be the top line, as this would be one of the first operations performed in the repair sequence. On this vehicle, the manufacturer specifies that safety and security related systems such as analog brakes, supplemental restraint systems, occupant restraint controller, seat belts, active head restraints, forward facing camera and radar, blind spot monitoring, and other automated electronic driver assistance systems must be tested for fault codes, DTCs, that could be active or stored following a collision. They also stipulate that it is necessary before and after collision repair. Most modern vehicles will not illuminate a malfunction indicator lamp or mill light, even if there are present diagnostic trouble codes or DTCs. Pre-scanning the vehicle with an OEM recognized scan tool will help to identify any existing faults or codes. The OEM tool will also give visibility to proprietary systems that are unique to that OEM while aftermarket tools may not have this capability. It is important to know if any DTCs are present before commencing repairs to ensure proper and safe vehicle operation and to ensure that all impacted systems and functions are addressed and restored and to follow the procedures as outlined by the vehicle manufacturer in the repair manual. It's also equally important to take note of any live data in vehicle control models that may be out of specification. For example, Seat weight and steering angle values are common things to check after an accident. Both are tied to safety systems, and there may or may not be a DTC indicating a problem. The scanning process can highlight the status of certain modules and may further inform the estimator if the replacement of the components is required. A pre-scan can avoid costly estimating errors and ensure the repair plan accounts for all operations that will be required prior to delivery and alert to any potential more advanced diagnostic or calibration work that may require planning for sublet that may be required. Unexpected sublets can result in repair delays and missed delivery commitments to the customer. The Database Enhancement Gateway, or DEG, has developed a quick reference chart of labor operations or repairs requiring pre and post scan, initializations, and calibrations. To download this chart, visit www.degweb.org. It is important to remember the tasks and charges associated with different types of scans may differ. For the RAM line of vehicles, FCA specifies that this procedure must be performed using the Mopar YTEC diagnostic scan tool or at a company such as Aztec that performs remote diagnostic scans of the vehicle using FCA scan tools in conjunction with their patented Aztec device. Subletting to a dealer with the specified tools may also be an option, but may require additional considerations such as tow or transport of the vehicle to and from the sublet location. If performing the scans in-house, some manual tasks expected of the in-house technician associated with performing a remote diagnostic scan may include locate keys, locate vehicle, locate repair order, move and park vehicle in designated area. In cold weather, allow vehicle to heat to operating temp. Some controllers are temp sensitive, like ABS. Collect battery pack or charger. Collect the scan tool equipment. Hook up the battery pack or charger to maintain voltage. Hook scan equipment to the OBD2 port and cycle key to on. Submit scan report which includes entering vehicle information, crash information, RO information, and contact information for scan operator. 
and wait for the call from the scan company. Be available to cycle the key, apply weights on seats, move seats, apply pressure to brakes, and more. Review the scan report, address necessary items in the service manual, and researching DTC flowcharts. Put all required equipment away, and then test drive the vehicle according to the scan company process and in accordance with the OEM documented repair procedures. The steps involved with performing a remote diagnostic scan and in-house scan with an OEM scan tool and sublet scan to a dealer may all vary, and some may need to be performed multiple times to properly complete the scan process. Repair facilities should reference OEM tool lists, procedures, and position statements for information on approved scan tools and software for the make and model you are working on. Always reference OEM procedures for unique requirements specific to the vehicle you are working on. Many of the steps identified in this video would also be necessary as part of a post-repair scan process as well. It is also important to realize that diagnostic scans are steps in the fault identification and troubleshooting process. There are instances where an in-house scan may identify a repair or calibration task that cannot be handled in-house and may require sublet to the dealer. In these instances, the shop may have time invested in performing the previously mentioned work and still require sublet operations as well. For more information on this procedure or others required to complete collision repairs, please refer to the SCRS Guide to Complete Repair Planning.